Greg is available in the room. Could we need to use him in the case of, of an emergency? We'll talk to him uh, uh, through the case. There are three exits, uh, two at the top of the room, one to the left, one to the right, as we've come in, and one at the rear, down at the, the left, left-hand side here, from where I'm standing. The bathroom, uh, I could see, are behind the curtain there, to the right-hand side, and behind you as well. We'd encourage you to keep your mobile phones on silent, if possible. And also, your safety is our, is our utmost concern, and in line with public health advice, we'd advise you to keep your masks on as much as possible throughout the evening, and particularly as you're moving around the stands uh, at the end, end of the session, and uh, observe social, distance, so social distancing where possible. Okay. Good evening. Welcome. Welcome to MTU, a very heart hearty, warm welcome. You're here on a, a historical day. Uh, this morning, the flag, the MTU flag, was officially raised across six campuses in Cork and Kerry. So that happened today, even though we were uh, established Munster Technological University since January the 1st. So you were here when the flag was raised by our Taoiseach, Michal Martin, and Minister Simon Harris and, and Norma Foley uh, here today. So there are, there's an opportunity to take some photographs um, and tweet out that you were here on the day that the MTU flag, flag was raised. My name is Dr. Breda Kenny. I'm head of the School of Business here at NTU. And here with me this evening is Ms. Caroline O'Reilly, head of Department of Man Management and Enterprise, Dr. Claire Sullivan Rochford, head of Department of Accounting and Information Systems, Mr. Don Crowley, head of Department for Organization and Professional Development, Dr. Theo Fenton, head of Department of Marketing and International Business, and we're also delighted to welcome our student and alumni representatives here tonight, Neve Cronin, Nikki Joyce, Rasha Courtney, Deborah Fitzgerald, Gillian French, and Adam Hurley. This evening, you'll get an opportunity to hear about our CEO offerings across the business domain, and specifically the following programs. MT 550, Bachelor of Business. MT 943, Bachelor of Business Honours in Marketing, MT942, Bachelor of Business Honours in Accounting, MT945, Bachelor of Business Honours in International Business with Language, MT551, Bachelor of Business in Business Administration, and MT944, Bachelor of Business Honours in Business Information Systems. There will be a short overview of each program provided and we'll hear our student and alumni experience on each program. We'll also cover some of the questions that have come in during the week on each, each program as we go through. But if you have any further questions, keep a note of those. Um, and also, at the end, we'll have our stands uh, where we can actually uh, approach some of our colleagues and address any specific queries that you may have. Before we delve into the programs, I'd like to highlight some of the key features of our business programs here in MTU. Firstly, what is a business degree, we're often asked. A business degree is often used as an umbrella term covering a wide range of courses in subjects that include finance, accounting, management, marketing, economics, and more recently, entrepreneurship. Broadly, there are two types. One being a general degree covering a broad spectrum of business-related subjects, for example, our Bachelor of Business Honours, and the second type, a combined degree which are those that focus more specifically on a narrower strand, for example, the Bachelor of Business Honours in a specified business area, such as our accounting, business administration, marketing, international business, or BIS programs. In all our programs, work placement is an integral component and plays a vital role in the education and personal development of our students. Every year, approximately 500 students complete a minimum of 15 weeks industry placement in semester two of third year in a host of companies, both within the Munster region, nationally and indeed internationally. The work placement or this work placement opportunity is now seen as a pathway to a future career for the student with the numerous companies offering students full-time positions once they've completed their final degree of study. This avenue of recruitment has increased significantly in recent years with companies now looking at work placement as an excellent method of recruitment and, in, and a way of enhancing the available talent pipeline for themselves. Furthermore, 
we provide students with an opportunity to build international networks and experience through a growing and diverse number of international students at MTU or through international education exchange, work placement or study abroad programs. MTU students can spend one or two semesters on an Erasmus exchange at one of our over 70 partner universities abroad. You don't necessarily have to be taking a foreign language to consider a study abroad program as many of our partner universities offer programs through English. Our students also have access, access to an award-winning entrepreneurship ecosystem where you can develop your entrepreneurial and creativity skills as part of your curriculum, as well as through a range of extracurricular activities such as the enterprise societies, competitions, and startup programs through our on-campus incubator. Finally, our business graduates go on to work in many different sectors, more obvious careers with a business degree include roles in accounting and finance departments. Other sectors with high demand for business graduates include marketing and digital marketing, IT, human resources, supply chain management and international business, to name but a few. This diversity and plenitude of careers with a business degree underlies the subject's appeal for many students. So now we'll move into the specific programs and I'd like to hand over to Ms. Caroline O'Reilly, Head of Management and Enterprise Department, to discuss the Bachelor of Business program. MTU. Um, the degree is very well established and our graduates are working in a very wide um, range of careers, um, both um, locally, nationally and internationally across a broad range of sectors, both the not-for-profit and um, social enterprise sectors also. Um, and we have our graduates working um, in public organisations, private organisations and working in Ireland and overseas. So I suppose um, the sky's the limit really in terms of the range of opportunities. The Bachelor of Business degree program will be of particular interest to students who want to pursue a business career but are not sure about what area of business they might like to work in. So the course gives students an opportunity to actually, um, I suppose, get a taste of a range of business subjects and discipline areas and then decide whether they want to ultimately pursue a degree in business, um, marketing or accounting. So in terms of how that might support students, I'm joined here tonight by Neve Cronin. Neve is um, a fourth year student who is currently studying the Bachelor of Business Honours degree and Neve commenced her Bachelor of Business degree in 2018. So Neve, you're very, very welcome. And um, if it's okay, I'm gonna put some questions to you for the audience. So we might take you back to 2018 and would you just maybe tell everybody why you picked the Bachelor of Business degree? Um, about what course to choose and what college to attend and I distinctly remember attending the open day here at what was formerly CIT now MTU and all of that changed after I saw the talk for the business course you know from the talk alone I gathered that the course applied a practical sense to a practical approach to learning and it brought a sense of variety in the module choices and it really had fantastic connections with business nationwide and internationally and as a student who was so unsure of what pathway they wanted to take, this course allowed you to explore accounting, business and marketing. So I knew it was the choice for me to explore my options. Great, thanks Neve. And I suppose within the degree programme, the diverse range of career opportunities are very much linked to the range of subjects that you will study. So in addition to doing mandatory modules that will be, will be linked to areas like management, um, accounting, economics, law, IT and marketing, you'll also get to study uh, elective modules in the areas of supply chain, HR, entrepreneurship, um, workforce diversity and in terms of, Neve, your own journey, now that you're in fourth year, having gone through all those elective options, can you give us an insight into the modules you studied and the degree that you chose? Yeah, sure. So in first year, from what I can remember anyway, it was geared at us 
finding our feet. So the module choice was really broad, you know, from accounting to marketing to IT to economics. Um, you also have the opportunity to choose electives in German, French or Spanish, but since languages were never my strong suit, um, I chose microbusiness, which ended up being my favourite module in first year, as it essentially taught you how to set up a business. And these enterprise and innovation focused modules are consistent throughout the degree. Um, in second year then, I found a love of marketing, so I took more marketing focused modules. It was through that then I also discovered a passion for HR and law, and um, I decided I wanted to direct my focus back to business in third year as I wanted to keep my experiences and my knowledge as broad as possible. And from undertaking a sample of all the modules, I felt really secure in my decision. Uh, the beauty of the course really is the variety, you know, it allows you to find your niche, but it also enables you to continue to expand your knowledge and continue to build your skills in every, every area of the business. So that continues to drive my module choices to this day. Yeah, no, thanks, Neve. And I suppose over the four years, you've undertaken a, a wide variety of assessments. And can you give um, prospective students here tonight some examples of the activities in those assessments that you feel have helped you build business skills? Yeah, sure. Um, as I mentioned, the course has a really practical approach to learning. And I do think the most memorable assessments are ones that helped us develop our presentation skills. Um, from first year, really, you're asked to present to be it your lecturer, your class, sometimes even a judging panel and an audience. Um, it does throw you in the deep end a small bit, but from those experiences, your confidence builds, the nerves start to disappear, and you enter the working world fully equipped to present to all different levels of management. Uh, the vast majority of our assessments as well also require us to analyse a company and provide a recommendation or solution uh, for them to improve based on our studies and these type of assessments bring the learning to life and now in fourth year we're given multiple opportunities to work with companies in live case studies to fix real-time problems they're facing uh, such as our workforce diversity module which is due next week now so I better get on that. <laughs> he was under a small bit of pressure at the moment so so in terms of I suppose that whole ass assessment experience um, in addition to studying the modules, those assessments allow students to build that real-life business experience. So we're very, I suppose, conscious of bringing guest speakers, linking in assignments with real problems that are in industry, and also building those relationships with industry. So the um, live case that Neve has mentioned there, in fourth year we partner, for example, this is just one example, with Dell Technologies in the area of, um, for a module, titled Workforce Diversity, working on a real-life um, issue that they've identified in the area of diversity, so students are working on projects at the moment. It's all also linked to a competition. And what's the prize, Neil? Um, Dell laptops. Yeah, so, so um, yeah, the yeah. pressure's on. <laughs> so, yeah, and I suppose it is all about that experience, making it real, um, and that link with competitions, that experiential piece. So, and bringing us on to the experience piece then as well, your skills development um, for your, I suppose, employability is um, further enhanced through experience options that are available to you in third year. So in third year of a business degree here at MTU, you have the option to do a work placement or go on Erasmus. Now, Neve, you did the work placement, so you just might tell us a little bit about your experience there. Yeah, so uh, during placement, I worked as a project and events coordinator for Apple, working on community and engagement initiatives in the areas of giving, inclusion, diversity, and um, education. So I felt fully equipped to enter the working world as a result of all the experiences I had undertaken and projects I have done to date. And now when I'm applying for grad roles, I feel I know what area I want to apply myself in. So it was a great experience, I loved it. No, that's great. And I suppose just to give people a sense, in terms of the Bachelor of Business degree, we would be placing um, hundreds of students at this point. We're in the fourth year of the placement program. We have connections with small and large and medium-sized companies in a variety of sectors. Some of the larger companies we, we would connect in with are Clearstream, Dell Technologies, Eli Lilly, WiseTech, Bar Biomarin. Um, and the kind of roles that students will take on will be linked to finance, HR, project management, back office support. Um, so it's quite varied, and I suppose employers do say that our students are particularly adaptable. So in terms of just summing up, I do hope we've given you a flavour of the Bachelor of Business degree. It does give you an insight into um, the variety of options that are open to you, and it is about giving you choice. So thank okay. you.
Thank you very much, Carolyn, and thank you, Neve. That was very insightful. We have a couple of questions that have come in okay. during the week, so if, if we can pose those to you, if, if I may. Um, the first question is, can you outline some of the career opportunities that are open to graduates of the General Business uh, Honours degree, please? Yeah, and I suppose in terms of the opportunities, they're linked to the variety of disciplinaries. So you will find business graduates working in finance roles, in brand management, in marketing roles, in accounting roles, in supply chain, logistics, analyst roles. So, and I suppose it is to get that point across that you are not um, confined to a particular um, business area necessarily. And we do find students going on also to pursue graduate programs with companies like Mosgraves and Dell Technologies and also pursuing postgraduate opportunities where they want to maybe fine tune their particular business focus. Okay, thank you. And the next question is, I would like to work as a secondary school teacher. Which courses would best help me achieve this career option? Um, I suppose in terms of the Bachelor of Business Honours degree will give you um, those business subjects that you need um, to meet the Teaching Council requirements. To qualify as a secondary school teacher, you still have to do a postgraduate qualification, which takes about two years. Um, but through the business um, general business degree option, you can pursue business um, to leaving cert. And depending on your elective choice, we can throw accounting into the mix as well. And if you pursue the accounting degree to um, final year, you would be an accounting um, teacher as well for secondary school. Obviously, you can't do the whole lot together, but we can facilitate um, and help you with your choices there. Okay, thank you, Carla. And the last question for now. Uh, if choosing the general business degree, what are the helpful leaving certificate subjects? Um, if you have done business and accounting, of course, they will help. But to be fair, the modules start at fundamental level, so you don't necessarily have to have done business subjects at all for your leaving cert. We will start with the basics and work our way up from there. Okay. Thank you very much. If you have further questions after the, the session, after all the presentations, the business stand is MT550. is just here on, on my left, uh, and you can approach some of our colleagues, some of our lecturing uh, colleagues and students and, and staff are there, are here to help you afterwards. Okay, so thank you very much. And as we're moving between programs, we're going to take a short kind of commercial break because we're going to show a video as we move staff on and, and students on and off the stage, uh, and also for a remote audience, we'll, ha we'll have some, some videos to, to show, very short videos while we change over. So thank you. MTU prides itself on being a student-centred university. The close and tight-knit community that we have today really makes it personal to every single student. MTU really does push the boundaries on being as student-centred as possible. Within the Students' Union, we are here to provide a voice for students. We run a number of campaigns throughout the year. Within MTU, there's a number of sports and societies. So we have a number of sports clubs from soccer, football, hurling, etc. And societies is another kind of thing where students can meet like-minded people, people with the same interests, and have a kind of a social aspect as well. MTU, I believe, has students at its heart. One of the mantras we have in student affairs is the voice of the student must always be heard. And for us, that's very, very important that we listen to the student, we listen to what they're looking for, we listen to their changing needs, and we develop our services and grow our services around those various needs. We prepare students to be work ready and also to be life ready as civic minded graduates. Throughout their journey with us, we, we support them in many different ways. We support them in their health and well-being so that they can fully engage with their programmes as well as supporting them academically. And we're very much student-centred in that we want our students to reach their full potential and to flourish. Thank you. I'd like to welcome on stage Dr. Pio Fenton, Nikki Joyce and Rasha Courtney to present Marketing and the International Business with Language Programme. Okay, thank you, Brida, and good evening, everyone. Um, so I'm glad to be joined here tonight by Nikki Joyce and Rasha Courtney. Who are... Ah, yes. <laughs> That's better. So, good evening everyone. Um, pleasure to be here with you all. I'm joined on my left by Nikki Joyce, um, who's a fourth year student in the Bachelor of, Honours, Bachelor of Business Honours in Marketing, and by Rasha Courtney, who's a graduate of the Bachelor of Business Honours in International Business with Language, which is the longest title programme in the entire Western Europe. 
So um, I'm going to talk to you just first about the marketing degree before we get a chance to speak about the international business with language degree. And I guess um, one of the things that I, I'd like to highlight tonight is maybe three things you might know about marketing, or maybe you do, but just to reinforce that, and also maybe to give you three reasons why to choose this program in the first instance. And I suppose the thing that comes to mind most strongly for me when I'm talking about marketing to groups is that every business in the world, in some form or other, needs to market their business. Whether you're small, medium, or large, you absolutely have to find customers to buy your products or your services. So employment is plentiful. It is varied as well. And the variety of roles within the discipline is actually quite enormous. And increasingly, marketing is kind of seen as the backbone of a business. Uh, if you can't um, convince people to buy uh, your products or your services, then really there's no hope for your business full stop. So the marketing function is increasingly important uh, as, people, as businesses try to reach new customers. The second thing I think that's important to know about marketing is that what it really is, it's about finding out what people want and then convincing them to pay for that. So that really involves a whole range of kind of human traits and qualities. So you're, you're looking at psychology, consumer behavior, human behavior, um, there's a science to it, it's analysis, it's about creativity. And it's as much an art as it is a science. So the reason why I highlight that is actually because the personalities that I see in our marketing classes are actually extremely varied. It suits different people in different ways, and actually there's no real personality type that I've identified that doesn't really suit marketing in some form or other. And that's one of the real flexibilities that the discipline offers. I think the third thing that I'd like to emphasize just about marketing in general is that marketing salaries are on the way up. So a recent survey I reviewed uh, indicates that uh, like a good digital marketing manager, maybe three or four years after graduation, can be on salaries north of 50K. It uh, wouldn't be unusual at that stage. Again, because there's a shortage of marketers and it's a type of skill set that has a level of precision required with it. So we're talking about lots of employment, we're talking about varied employment, and we're talking about well-paid employment. Um, so why specifically MT943 then? Uh, and Nikki will tell you a little bit more about this in just a moment, but there are three things I'd like to emphasize. Firstly, uh, I, I guess this marketing program is considered the best marketing degree in the country. Uh, there's various reasons for that, but it's the diversity of the content that's offered within the program that really stands out. We really prepare students for life as a marketer and what that means to now, it means today rather which is being a good digital marketer and also being good at the traditional marketing areas. Um, the second thing about this program is that it has won an award in the 2020 Education Awards for Best Business Collaboration. And that wasn't for working with one business, but rather for working with many businesses. We have a philosophy of what we call authentic assessment. So we want to make sure that as many of the assessments our students are doing are linked with real world businesses as possible. And we'll hear from Nikki in a little while about what that might actually look like. And the third thing, uh, and this is probably our key strength, is we have an exceptional lecturing team involved in our program. Uh, so we have people with experience in Google, uh, in paddypower.com, in Red FM, in Pearson, and in a whole range of small businesses, both nationally and internationally. And as well as that, as is the case with the entire School of Business, we've got really dedicated lecturers who are there to make sure that your journey is as successful as possible. So you don't have to believe me just on all that. Uh, Nikki here is in fourth year, as I say, and is up to here with assessments at the moment herself. Um, but Nikki, if you don't mind, maybe you can tell us a little bit about your placement experience. Mm -hmm. So in third year, we do placement, and it's for about 15 weeks, and I was in Dell. So I was there for seven months, and because of the work I did there, I've actually got a role um, for next June, so for when I graduate a full-time job. Everything I learned, um, it came from my knowledge of marketing through the four years, my three years here as of then. And I also got the opportunity to express myself in ways that maybe you mightn't be able to because obviously in college you kind of have to, like you're fo as you find yourself, but you're also following kind of set out modules or whatever. But placement really allowed me to find myself and who I am. And it got me so much experience. It built up my communication skills. I learned about different areas. And one of the biggest parts for me was that I, so I was in the services sales department in Dell, which you can imagine is absolutely humongous. But I actually, 
um, got recognised by the senior vice president of senior sales because of the work I was doing and I built a relationship with that person. So it just helped me in so many ways and doing this course, it was the most amazing thing I've ever learned from it and everything I learned from it, I got to put into practice. Fantastic and it's great to hear that they're keeping you on after mm -hmm. your finished fourth year. That's fantastic. Now, I mentioned earlier, obviously, that we do quite a lot around what we call live cases, mm -hmm. which is authentic assessment. You would have worked on quite a lot of those. You're probably working on a number of them at the moment. Mm -hmm. Would you like to tell people maybe about how they work and, and what you find so beneficial about them? Yeah. So with live cases, you're working with a real life company. So to name a few, um, we've done, we did Connecticut, we've done um, Rugby Tours Ireland. There's just numerous amount of companies that you work with and you base, so for some of them, you can come up with marketing campaigns or you give them feedback or, as Neil said earlier, um, solutions or uh, recommendations, what they can do for their business. So by doing this, it gets you the experience of working in the real world without actually working in the real world. So it's really great to work alongside some of these companies. And I know for me personally, we did, um, we, we worked with Connecticut in third year and it's probably maybe one of the biggest live cases you'll do in third year is the event management module or the for event man or for just doing all of this. And my team actually won and Connecticut have now kind of launched aspects of our campaign that we propose to them. So it's an amazing thing to see that someone who started off as in marketing, there's 120 students that your work is recognized and to get that experience, it really sets you ahead for placement for, or for, yeah, for placement when you're then putting all of those skills into it. You're not going into it blind from just learning modules and sitting behind a computer all day. You're actually getting the knowledge of what a company requires and when they need it most. And that's what you're there to help them with. Fantastic. And obviously you mentioned Connecticut. Other companies that students would work with habitually include Ryanair. We've worked with Ballymaloo. Mm -hmm. We've worked with um, Chef. We've worked with various different kind of fast moving mm -hmm. kind of consumer good companies as well as a range of smaller ones that you may not necessarily know of. Mm -hmm. OK, um, we're just after running out of time there, Nikki. So thank you very much for, for your mm -hmm. contribution and best of luck with the continued assessments. Thanks a million. Very good. Okay, so we'll move on just to speak about MT945, which is our Bachelor of Business in Honours in International Business with Language. And Raja Courtney is uh, joining us for that. So again, I'd like to tell you a few things about that discipline in the first instance, and then maybe specifically why you would do this program in that area. So I guess it's no surprise to anyone that we're living in an increasingly globalized world. Um, so all the businesses in the world are more connected and more deeply related to one another than they've ever been before. Uh, and obviously they need people who understand the culture, the, the various different kind of norms that go with working in businesses in different jurisdictions, different regions of the world. So that's always going to be in demand. I think that the second thing that's really important, you know, we're, we're living here in Cork uh, as part, like the Irish economy has lived and grown on the connectedness it has with Europe and the broader world. And it needs people who understand the intricacies of working in that kind of an environment to power its activities, whatever they may be, whether it's working with customers or suppliers or whatever it, it may actually be. And there's a kind of a challenge around understanding what's required in order um, to fulfill the needs of a particular company when you're working with organizations from different countries. And the third thing I think that's worth emphasizing, obviously this is a degree international business with languages, is that despite us living in a, in a world that's increasingly English oriented, or we think so, languages are really important. So if you're an Irish company and you're trying to sell into South America, then People in companies in those countries really appreciate that there are Irish employees who they can have a conversation with in their own native tongue. And there is huge demand for Spanish, French, and German in that regard. Obviously, there are new and emerging languages as well, but in terms of this program, those are areas that are really, really critical. So that's the general landscape around international business in the first instance. Um, so specifically, the with MT945, International Business with Languages, um, I guess there's three things I would like to emphasize. Firstly, you will learn about international business from people who have worked in major international environments. So we have people working in the department and in the school who have worked in the Middle East, in places like Bahrain and Dubai, all over the European continent, be it France, Germany, Spain, Italy, etc., South America um, and Central America, as well as places like China. And that experience is, is, is something that they bring to bear in the classroom and something that, that really transmits to students in a, in a very positive way. 
Um, the second thing that's important about this program um, is that we take your language ability at Leaving Cert and help you to develop it from there. So you're not starting from scratch. We're, we want to get you to a point where you'll be comfortable in any business or social situation um, in, in your working and future life in whatever form that might take. And uh, again, you might not decide to end up actively living in a country where that, that language is spoken. You might be based here in Cork. But having the language makes you more attractive to employers because they can see the value of that language when it plays out uh, in the workplace. And the third point, uh, which we'll hear more from Russia on just a moment, is that you will get to study and or work abroad for up to one year. And this sets you up for life in two different ways. First way is that it absolutely makes you more confident about yourself and your strengths and your capabilities. And that is an absolutely wonderful thing to know at that stage of your life. The second thing that it sets you up as regards is if you go into any interview for any job in this country, having lived abroad for any period of time, you are automatically more interesting than everyone else. And that is because you've demonstrated the ability to stand on your own two feet, to cut the apron strings and go abroad and do something that actually takes a little bit of bravery for. Any graduate of this program will have done that and that's one of the key advantages of it. Now, again, as I said earlier, you don't have to believe me. Uh, I'm joined here by Rasha Courtney, who is a graduate of the program, just recently graduated, and is on a master's program here currently as well on a part-time basis while acting as a graduate intern in our Rubicon Innovation Center. So firstly, Rasha, would you be happy to tell us about your experience abroad? Yeah, so in the third year, I went on Erasmus program. Actually, we just hold you a second there until we get the microphone working. Right there once more. Yeah, that's fine. Perfect. Thanks. Yeah, so as I was saying, in third year, I went on Erasmus to San Sebastian for the year. And San Sebastian is in the north of Spain in the Basque Country. And it's a great place full of culture and the language is like pre Indo European. And it's just a very interesting place. And for the first semester, I studied in the University of the Basque Country, where I got to meet amazing people from all over the world and work on different assignments and projects in the university while completing all my modules through Spanish, which was definitely challenging, but allowed me to pursue my language skills and further my linguistic ability. And then in second semester, I worked for a digital marketing company called Zinc Up Marketing in Miramon and San Sebastian. And here I got to put all the things that I'd learned throughout my three years in CIT into practice. And I got to work on amazing cases with partner companies such as Coca-Cola and Eroski. And I worked on projects such as Bind 4.0, which was an acceleration program for the Basque government. And the San Sebastian Film Festival, where I got to put my creative element into play. And I got to implement everything that I'd been learning throughout my digital marketing modules in the college. And Placement was a great opportunity for me to gain a great insight into marketing, entrepreneurship, and innovation. And it gave me a real sense of direction where I wanted to take my career. So it was a great experience Brilliant. overall. Yeah. And I know it was cut short a little bit by COVID, but you managed to maintain your employment while uh, working from Ireland yeah. in, in the later half of it. Yes. That's what's so fantastic about it. Digital marketing, it was so versatile, and I was able to continue what I was doing even if I wasn't in the country. So yeah, it was fantastic. fantastic. That's great. A little bit disruptive, that COVID. Yeah, just a bit. <laughs> um, when you came back then, you went into Fortier, and I know you were involved in a number of national and international competitions just around inter interdisciplinary work with students from engineering departments, building upon your knowledge of entrepreneurship and innovation. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Yeah, so in final year, I got, uh, participated in a module called New Product Development, where I was partnered with both business and engineering students alike. And we began to compete in an array of competitions. And my highlights include the ESB Intercollege Challenge, where I was working in a multidisciplinary team. And it's a fast-paced two-day event where you tackle a complex challenge. And it was a great event, and we managed to place third overall. And following that, we competed in Engcom 2021, which is usually held in Montreal. But because of COVID, it was held virtually. So I did it from my own room, which was <laughs> not as great, but it was still a fantastic experience. And we got to comp 
we got to tackle complex challenges from real companies such as Revision Military, Genetech, Accenture, and Workdown. So we placed first in our division and third overall, and it was great. It's great material for our CV, and it's through these invaluable experiences that MTU have given me that I've been able to develop myself, not only personally, but on a professional and academic level as well. And it's through the mentorship and guidance that I've received from lectures, especially in my final year, that it's given me the sense of direction that I was looking for and just gave me uh, a newfound development for my love of entrepreneurship and enterprise, which has led to me working in the Rubicon Centre. Yeah. Very good. Thank you, Rasha. And just maybe a, a final question then. Obviously, you studied uh, Spanish as part of your degree all the way through. What do you think was the advantage of studying language and what was the experience of studying language like for you? Yeah, so I went to a Guelph school originally and I always knew that I wanted to pursue languages. So I was delighted when I found this course because I was able to combine the two things that I love, languages and business, which isn't offered everywhere. So I thought that was a unique you know, element of the course. And I think for me that having a language makes me much more marketable as an employee and that employers really value that angle. They really value their employees having languages, especially in international markets. And I love the idea of working abroad and this was instilled through my placement in San Sebastian and it's something that I'd love to do again and having the language allows me to do so and through my Spanish lectures in MTU I feel like I can effectively communicate in the workplace and in like a social environment so I have the confidence to go and do what I want now. Yeah. Great, thank you very much Rasha. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much, Rush, and thank you, Nikki. It was really insightful to, to get your perspective on, on our courses. That's, that's what it's all about for us, and we're very proud of our students and, and our alumni, and great to see, to see you all here, here tonight and, and all of our students that you'll hear from. Uh, for you, just a couple of questions that have come in during, during the week. Uh, the first one is, can you take a language module if you're not doing the international business degree? Actually, yeah, that, that's a good question. So uh, across most of our business programs, you can decide to take Spanish, French, or German. Uh, if you're taking French, you have to have done it for the Leaving Cert. If you're taking German, it's best that you've done it for at least the Junior Cert. But you can take Spanish from scratch uh, so without having a word of it before. And we find actually that's something that is a popular choice for students in first year. They just want to broaden their horizons. Maybe they're thinking about Ibiza and those kind of places. Uh, but it definitely helps a little bit. And it is an option that's available across uh, most of the business programs other than accounting and information systems. Okay, thank you. And another question that's come in. I want to work in sales management and business development. Can the marketing degree help me with this? Okay, yeah, that's actually another good question. A lot of people who, who complete marketing degrees end up in roles that are kind of business development or sales. And now, often when you're 17 or 18, you don't think about sales as a career, but if you want to make serious money, it's often where you should go. I'm not necessarily talking about, you know, selling cars or that kind of thing, but maybe working for a pharmaceutical company that's selling a part of its product to another pharmaceutical company. And the ability to develop relationships and do all those kind of things are things that we explore in the marketing degree to make sure that you can go into marketing, digital marketing, business development, and sales-related roles. Okay, thank you. So thank you very much. And following the session, our marketing and international business colleagues will be here in this between these two areas here at, at the front of the room, if, should you have any further questions. So thank you very much, and we'll go to another video break while we, we change over on the stage here. So thank you. Equality, diversity and inclusion, EDI, ensures fair treatment and opportunities for staff and students. So by promoting equity, every individual has an opportunity to make the most of their lives and talents. Equality, diversity and inclusion is embedded across everything we do at MTU. Our staff and students come together to identify and tackle the many barriers to inclusion so that we can achieve our full potential. The structures here genuinely are really, really supportive for people from any background or any disability. So everybody's welcome, uh, no matter what their background, what their creed or colour or ability, and that uh, it's opportunities for everybody in an educational, friendly setting. For me, as a member of the LGBT community, inclusion at MTU is about more than flags and slogans, even though those things can be important. It's about understanding that a person has a background and qualities that are important 
and which can be taken advantage of to allow a person to achieve their full potential, not despite their background, but rather because of it. Inclusion to me means equal opportunity and access to reach your full potential, and this was my exact experience at MTU. Inclusion to me means that you are included in different activities, no matter your ethnicity, uh, culture, skin colour or disability. I am in many different societies because I love to work with different people and I have found that the societies especially have been extremely welcoming, so MTU is a great place uh, to make friends. One thing around equality, diversity and inclusion that's very important to us uh, in the UNESCO Chair is the opportunity it presents to educate a generation of students to tackle exclusion and to tackle inequality. That would really be the power of a transformative education in action. Okay, so now I'd like to welcome to the stage Mr. Don Crowley and Deborah Fitzgerald. Am I on? Is it working okay? Yeah, thanks. So good evening, ladies and gentlemen. As Brida said, my name is Don Crowley. I'm head of Department of Organisation and Professional Development at the MTU School of Business. And I'm delighted to be joined this evening by one of our graduates, Deborah Fitzgerald, who completed the Level 8 Bachelor of Business and Business Administration Honours Programme in 2015. So welcome, Deborah. Thanks very much. And we'll have a chat shortly. You're going to hear a lot of similarities, um, kind of, I suppose, as a theme throughout the presentations this evening, because we're all speaking about Bachelor of Business qualifications. But what you'll also hear both from Caroline and Pio's presentations, my own now, and, and Claire's shortly, is some distinguishing characteristics um, that I suppose decipher each of the programs. The Bachelor of Business in Business Administration that I'm going to speak to you about now with, with Deborah, um, as well as having the fundamental building blocks of all business degrees like accounting, economics, marketing, management, maths and so on, um, also brings a unique blend of technical and technology skills as well with it. So the Bachelor of Business in Business Administration program typically welcomes 60 students per year uh, into first year. And while students work together in those uh, classes of 60 for their modules in maths and accounting and so on, uh, for your computer lab based modules, you're in smaller groups of 20 people, which gives you a great opportunity as well to build on those uh, wonderfully supportive relationships with your lecturers. So the, the program has a very practical, skills focused and applied nature, and it will be of particular interest and attraction to those who like applied learning and are also comfortable with the use of technology. Uh, while no um, prior experience of software, of particular software, will be expected. Um, students on the program and graduates of the program will become expert users of Microsoft Office products and also a range of other software including Microsoft Project, uh, Sage and so on. Uh, typically, students on the program will have 10 hours in the computer lab each week and 10 hours of the theory type lectures. So again, in line with all of the other programs, typically 20 hours per week of timetabled classes, plus then tutorials and, and study and assessments and assignments and so on. Business administration graduates typically go on to work in areas such as human resource management, supply chain management, IT, banking and insurance, and business analytics. So I'm going to talk to uh, Deborah now about uh, her experience on the program. And as I said, Deborah graduated from us in 2015. So Deborah, why did you initially choose the Bachelor of Business and Business Administration? Um, I suppose for the reasons you've listed there already, was that it was for me when I was looking at my CEO and I was trying to figure out what I was going to put down, when I saw business uh, administration, that there was the, the balance between practical and theory. I, at the time, really liked using the computer at home and the fact that I was able to upskill in that and get a qualification in it, as well as learn the theory, um, that for me kind of sold it. Um, and then as 
I, as I was going through the, the semesters and kind of was really looking at what I would be studying because that's really important when you are looking at the CEO and um, it's kind of looking at what you will be doing for the couple of years and when I saw that the work placement that there was a whole module on that that really was kind of the, the goal for me that I was like, I really want to get this course because I want to do that because it gives you that chance to have a CV that stands out from other graduates that when you do finish. Um, so that was that was what kind of stole my heart really when I got it. Great, good stuff. And across the School of Business, all students um, have the option to take that 15 week work placement in semester two. So the January to May of their third year but the vast majority of students will often stay on until the end of August, until they return to complete their fourth year or their level eight um, qualification. So when you were doing your placement then, um, Deborah, did you take the 15 weeks or did you work until later in the summer? I work, worked right up until the end of August. So I did my work placement in Dell Technologies, which at the time was EMC. Um, and I worked in the Partner Support Centre down in Mahin. And it was really fantastic. Um, I got to use um, kind of skills that I learned every day and that I was learning in college for the three years. And I genuinely use them in my role every day. And what was really special about it is that even though you were on work placement, you weren't treated any different to any other employee. You knew, you didn't know that you were that you were a student. Um, you got a laptop your first day. If your role needed it, you got a mobile phone, which was really special. Um, I made you feel like a grown up, really, when you're still only a student and you haven't graduated yet. Um, so I was lucky enough to stay until the end of August, and I had decided, kind of earlier on in the year, that I was going to come back to do the honours degree for the for the additional year. Um, I looked at the the modules that I was going to be studying. And in particular, that one of them was event management, which was something that I had a passion for and that I would want to pursue a, a career in afterwards. And um, that was kind of the reason that I came back to do the honours degree. And I was lucky enough to have a career in event management for a couple of years as well. So Great. And I think that's a decision that some of the students who do a level seven with a one year level eight mm. add on. That's a decision that many of them have to make having completed the work placement, because you do have the option to leave with your level seven. However, the vast majority of students will come back to do that level eight add-on. Um, and again, now, with, with, with Ab initio level eight programs, students do the full four years to get that honors degree. But with the level seven plus the one year level eight, some students will take the decision to take their level seven, perhaps to remain working for the company that they did their work placement with, and then perhaps in a lot of cases to do their level eight part-time while they're working. Um, so you returned and you completed your fourth year, Deborah, your level eight, your honors year, and from there went into the full-time workplace. So will you tell us a little bit about maybe your first role? Yeah, so I went down to the real world then in 2015 and I worked for Quest Software, which formerly was Dell Software at the time. Again, I went through a lot of um, transitions when the companies were changing. And I worked there as a sales support um, in the renewals department, and I was there for two and a half years. Um, and it was really fantastic. I used um, things like Sage and things like that that I never thought I'd see again once I graduated, but I was using it. Um, and I was able to t take part in employee resource groups, and I was able to use things from like my communications module, and whether it be working on the company newsletter that I was using document presentations. So I really brought things with me as I continued out into the workforce. And I was lucky enough to be there for a couple of years. And then I decided to um, kind of change Changed things up and there was an opportunity came my way for a company called Teamwork, which is Ireland's largest indigenous and um, SaaS company. And with them, I worked for three years as the corporate marketing specialist. And in that role, I managed all of the company's social media and I was their event manager as well. Um, and that was really where my, my passion was. And it was fantastic three years. I loved it there. Um, and I got to plan events for four or five hundred people. I got to travel with it. I was in Philadelphia, I was in Belfast, I was in London a few times, um, organized events in Boston, and it was really, really, um, it, was, it was brilliant. We had a great time. <laughs> great, and nice to get that international absolutely, experience as yeah, well. Absolutely, And I suppose while, while Deborah is speaking of her experience this evening, we also have students like Amy Hennessy, who's work, or graduates like Amy, Amy Hennessy, who's working as a HR generalist, 
with a London-based company. We have uh, Shane O'Sullivan, who's working as a business data analyst with AIB. Um, Owen Byrne, who's working as a brand manager as well with Musgrave Retail Partners. So a, a real kind of a breadth of job opportunities for people across HR, supply chain, uh, marketing, digital marketing, web design and web publishing and so on. So Deborah, some of your classmates, can you tell us a little bit about maybe the types of roles they've gone on to do? Please. Yes, so uh, one of my classmates is currently the HR manager at the Maryborough Hotel. Um, there is another classmate and he is the financial advisor um, for a company that's actually my name. Um, and then we have another uh, classmate actually who did her work placement with the Irish Cattle Breeding Association and she still works with them now as an accounts associate um, so there, and we actually have another, another colleague who is the HR advisor at VMware so a really broad range of um, places where, where we've all kind of ended up. Great, thanks Deborah. I suppose for us you know we're, we're limited with time this evening um, check out mtu.ie forward slash mt551 for further information as well on the programme and we'll be, we'll be happy to take questions as well afterwards. So thank you, Deborah. No problem, thank you. Thank you very much, Don, and thank you, Deborah. I have one or two questions from, um, from come in during the week, but I just before I say, uh, Deborah's being modest uh, and also Deborah is now a recipient of a scholarship uh, and, and is back here doing a research master's and also that is another route that uh, our, some of our students take the research master's and on to PhD and we have PhDs in, in business graduating at our next conferring ceremony in January so so the best of luck and we're delighted to, to have you back, back Thank with you us. so much, it's, uh, it's a really special thing to be a graduate of MTU but to be a graduate of business administration is really special and um, so it's a bit nostalgic next I think the last time I was on this stage was when I was receiving my, my honours degree and um, so to be back tonight as a, a research master student again is uh, there's a lot of emotion tonight for it so thanks very much yeah, for having no, me thank back you. thank you uh, so just two, two quickly questions uh, Don if, if I may um, would I need to have some computing skills before starting on the business administration course and I think you might have mentioned some of that but it's no harm to yeah, no harm to, to redress yeah. it and, and thanks um, Brida so a good question as we said you become throughout the three to four years the level seven and, and the level eight add-on you do become an expert user in Microsoft Office and a range of other software but no prior knowledge is expected of the student coming in so we do start really from the basics and just one last question here. Will I have to find my own work experience or will MTU find a position for me? So again, a good question. We, we spoke a good bit there about the, the work placement. And as we said, you have the option to do a 15-week work placement in third year. Typically, MTU and, and the, the placement coordinator for the program will help to develop and to, to, to organize the placement, will advertise job specs typically to the students in third year, will set the students up in terms of preparing them for interviews and applications. So typically, um, and generally, we would organize the placement here. However, occasionally someone may come to us and say, I've got a terrific opportunity to do a placement through a personal contact, and we're normally happy to support those also. Okay, thank you very much, Don. Thanks, thank you, Deborah. Deborah. Thank and we'll have another Deborah. short video break for, for our last changeover. Thank you. My name is David Kinney and I'm a Fortune Mechanical Engineering student and scholarship recipient in MTU. I recently competed in the Tokyo Olympics and won silver in the European Championships. The sports department in MTU is a fantastic asset to all aspiring athletes and played a huge role in my road to Tokyo. What I like most about societies is how you can meet a lot of great new people with shared interests. In MTU, there's a lot of great societies, whether you're interested in film, art, dance, music, there's kind of something for everyone. They're all student-led and they're all a lot of great fun. The campus is unbelievable. The new sports centre is top notch. The facilities are really great. The gym is unbelievable and the people that work there are really nice as well. I love Societies as it is an excellent creative outlet. It always encourages us to think outside the box and come up with something new. It is a great learning experience. I joined Rugby Club in MTU because it's something that my family have always been interested in and it's something I never took up. It gives you a distraction. You can work on your fitness and you can just relax after it. You, the social activity is brilliant, the amount of people you get to meet, people in different courses. It's good crack, like, you know, and you get a lot of fitness and you make friends for life, really. Yeah, just societies overall have been 
nothing but great. The amount of friends that I've made, the new connections that I've made, some of them I would say are definitely lifelong friends. I don't know, it's a very joyous experience. Oh, I would say 100% come here. The people are amazing and the staff, everyone is so friendly and helpful. It's the best. <laughs> Thank you. I'd like to welcome Dr. Claire O'Sullivan Rochford, uh, Gillian Hurley, and uh, sorry, Gillian French and Adam Hurley to the stage. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Brida. Um, it's I think one of my colleagues already said it tonight, but I just like to say it again. It is so lovely to have a live audience in front of us. Um, this time last year, we had to record it in the studio, and it is lovely to know that there are real students listening to us. Um, I just want to introduce um, Gillian. Uh, Gillian is a fourth year accounting student and Adam is in um, fourth year Bachelor of Business and in Information Systems. So just to begin, just to tell you a little bit about the Department of Accounting and Information Systems. We have almost a thousand students studying mainly at the undergraduate level across four very distinct disciplines, accounting, information systems, agriculture and horticulture. And tonight I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about two of those programmes. So I'll commence with the Bachelor of Business in Accounting Honours. And then in a little while I'll talk to you about the Bachelor of Business um, in Information Systems. So just to begin, um, our accounting degree is a four-year level eight programme. And obviously it's a specialist degree looking at accounting. But at the same time you're introduced um, to general business subjects. And I suppose one of the things that you'd have seen tonight, and I suppose something that's very interesting that you've probably realized tonight is the fact that studying for a Bachelor of Business, there are so many options open to you. So you can do the general business, you can do IS, as I'll talk about shortly, you can do business administration, marketing, and then accounting is, is another option there for you guys. So in terms of the accounting degree, what we have with our first year students is all of the modules are compulsory. So obviously you will take financial accounting, management accounting and so on, but you'll also be introduced to general subjects such as law, marketing, information systems. Um, the other thing I suppose to bear in mind is that one of the reasons that a student might actually opt to study accounting from the get-go is that they are considering pursuing an accounting qualification later. So in terms of maximizing professional, um, I suppose, exemptions from the professional examinations, you may decide to go the accounting route. Um, again, I suppose one of the, the great things about the accounting degree is that um, you have the option of doing more than just becoming an accountant. Um, I'll talk to Gillian in a minute about her own, her own experiences of the accounting degree, but to bear in mind that it isn't just for those who want to go and do an accounting qualification, you could equally decide that you want to go into uh, management or into IS or into kind of more general business roles. That's also an option to you, even if you do select to study accounting. I think another thing that has come across tonight is the importance of work placement. And again, the, the Bachelor of Business in Accounting is no different in that we also offer a work placement. The work placement is typically for 15 weeks, but as mentioned already tonight, that can extend much, much more beyond that time frame. And what we've seen is that many of our students, again, because they are studying accounting, do take up placement with the larger accounting firms, so the big four firms, as well as um, smaller accounting firms. And obviously some actually do go into industry, so the likes of Apple, Pepsi and so on would be some examples of recent companies that would have taken interns for that period. Okay, so I'm going to turn to Gillian now. Welcome, Gillian. Thanks a million for joining me um, on stage. So I suppose just to begin, can you tell us a little bit about why you decided to study accounting? Um, yeah, thanks for having me. Um, I suppose I was lucky enough to know that I wanted to do accounting, so I was able to go into straight accounting. Um, and I knew I wanted to further that by um, completing my professional qualifications, and I knew that the course here offered all the exemptions to, that you can get to complete those quali qualifications. Um, I suppose I was lucky attending open days and talking to my friends and family that have gone before me and gone to college. And a lot of them did the course before me and they told me that it was a very practical course and that you offered all the exemptions um, that you could get for your qualified um, exams. Okay, so just to point out, um, Gillian has mentioned there that she came straight into study accounting. But for those of you, I suppose, who are maybe uncertain, maybe you don't want to be an accountant or you're not sure, you might enjoy accounting, um, there is the option, obviously, to take the general Bachelor of Business degree. And as part of the general business degree, you'd be studying some of the accounting modules at first and second year level, and you could elect 
um, in the third year of the general business degree to come across into the accounting degree programme, assuming that you've covered the relevant modules in first and second year. Um, can you tell me a little bit about, um, I suppose, in first year, do you think that somebody who wouldn't have studied accounting for their leaving cert, would they, would they struggle in terms of doing the materials in first year accounting? Um, no, absolutely not. And it was only today I was talking to some of my friends when I was saying that I was attending the open night tonight that reaching, looking back into first year, you know, one of my friends didn't study business or accounting for um, her leaving cert and I asked her was she at a disadvantage or anything and she said no she wasn't. So it was good to know that, you know, she wasn't at a disadvantage um, because you start at the complete basics in first year um, it's like you, you lecturers think that no one has ever studied accounting or business before, so no one's at a disadvantage. While it is an advantage that you have studied it, um, you won't find first year difficult or anything like that. Um, you're all at the same level then. And I suppose it's worth pointing out as well that typically we take about 60 students, and again, because we start from the, the ground level up, the, the classes are a combination of both lectures and, I suppose, smaller groups, tutorials and labs. So you have an opportunity then to get to know your lecturers and they can tailor the learning styles directly towards the students. And most of the lecturers that are, that are on the programme would be qualified accountants themselves. So they'd be very familiar with, 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 with the materials that they're covering. In terms of the subjects that you've been studying, what would you say has been your favourites to date? Um, well, I was saying that was, there's a practical side um, you have labs um, in first and second and third year, and it was only this time last year in third year where you had um, BIS and integrated accounting systems where you were looking like um, programs like SAGE, like other courses do as well, uh, which came, came very handy for my placement. So it was definitely the practical um, modules I enjoyed the most, where you were given kind of live cases and you were to apply all your knowledge and create a set of accounts for that business. So it was nice to see, you know, the accounts kind of come to life and um, apply all your knowledge and skills to to help those cases. And tell me then, have you found anything challenging about the course? Um, while, while it still is college, you know, you do have exams at the end of the day, so it's probably the exams that are most challenging. Um, and in college, you know, it's different to school. You don't have just end of year exams, you have mid-semester exams, which are kind of being taken place right now, but that helps in the long run when you, you can keep on track of all your studies. But doing them, it's obviously, you know, you're doing your exams, but you have to attend college for your other lectures. So that's probably the most difficult aspect is keeping on top of your workload. But the lectures are there to help and there's offer other um, supports that are out there that um, can help you along the way for your exams. But I suppose it is the exams, but, you know, they have to be done as well. Okay, Gillian, just one final question there. I suppose one of the interesting parts of tonight is hearing about the various um, work placements that, the, that our fourth year students have um, pursued in, the, in their third year. Can you tell me a little bit about your work placement last year? Um, yeah, so it was only this time last year when we started applying for placements. But we, we start, I started in end of January, um, just gone, and I went to Trend Micro, which is um, only down the road. But I've been there since end of January, and I'm still there. Um, just working part-time while college is on and um, I was a finance intern so I was able to go to different departments not just specialize in one department which was great to kind of get a, a varied sense from different departments um, but I didn't know which department I wanted to go into so I made sure I applied for a finance role that I could touch into different departments um, so I was able to get to see the different departments but um, I'm not continuing staying on with them I got a different graduate role um, in sign time with PwC which is um, in with one department in assurance, which has turns out has been my favorite department. So I'm kind of looking in that regard that I'm going straight into that department this time next year uh, to hopefully um, get my professional exams. That's fantastic, Gillian. So Gillian will pursue um, a, an accounting qualification. So she'll do Chartered Accountants Ireland, ACA qualification with PwC. So she'll do three and a half years training with PwC, which is one of the big four, as well as studying for her remaining um, professional exams. Thank you so much, Gillian. Right, so you. I suppose just to summarise there, um, if you're interested in doing accounting, um, we'd, we'd ask you to strongly consider doing it at MTU. You'll have the benefit of staff expertise, smaller classes, and of course, you'll gain the maximum number of accounting exemptions for those of you who want to pursue an accounting qualification. Okay, so last but not least, um, I'm going to just talk you through um, a little bit about the Bachelor of Business in Information Systems. And Adam then will join me for, a couple, for questions and answers. Um, so it's a level eight, um, four year degree, and it's a hugely popular program, but with both students and employers alike. 
and basically the programme gives students an excellent knowledge of both business and IS modules. Um, basically, somebody who studies um, the Bachelor of Business and in Information Systems is excellent in the working place for being able to develop and understand information. Um, the programme has very strong links with industry, um, obviously has a work placement, which I'll talk to Adam about shortly, and the course is split 50-50 between both business and IS modules. In the first year of the programme, all of our modules are compulsory, so you'll study both IS, such as systems analysis, you will study financial accounting, you'll take maths, you'll take um, uh, IT applications, so there's a number of different modules there as an introduction. Um, to the programme. The good thing about the, the Bachelor of Business and in Information System is that you do not need to have any experience with programming or coding. So just like we discussed in accounting, it'll be taken from basics, so as though you've never studied any of that before, which you likely haven't, and will be from the ground up. So our staff, um, our staff again, would be experts in the areas of systems analysis, data analytics, design thinking and so on. So you'll be at the cutting edge of what is up to date in, in, in information systems. Again, work placement is an integral part of the programme, just as it is across the School of Business. And we've had many of our students, I suppose our most recent um, interns, went to the likes of Dell, um, went to um, Kerry Group, Janssen and Trend Micro. So they're just a couple of examples of the most recent interns. And again, we, we we generally tend to find that um, our employers treat it as a talent pipeline, so a lot of our graduates will actually secure um, a graduate program as a result of placement, so they know when they graduate they'll be going back um, to that firm. Okay, so Adam, I'm going to ask you a couple of questions if you don't mind in relation to the program. So I suppose first and foremost, why did you actually decide to study information systems? Yeah, is this working here? Yeah, so when I was 18 years of age, similar to yourselves, um, studying my leaving cert, I would been just as kind of confused, um, kind of wondering where to go, where do I want to study. And I always had a passion for technology, um, and I was studying all the business subjects in leaving cert as well, and I did enjoy doing them. Um, so I did attend the open night um, at the time, CIT, and that's when I found out about BIS, and I mean, BIS is the perfect subject for someone like me. That passion for technology as well as the interest of business subjects. Um, and I mean, BS gives a perfect blend of both business subjects as well as technology. Um, so yeah, I mean, I did learn about BS from the openness and I've never looked back since. And what helped you to decide on MTU then to study IS in? So MTU is widely known as a very inclusive college. Um, and I mean, it's very lab based as well. So you get to know people more, you get to know your lecturers more. Uh, and even at that, technical subjects such as programming can be very difficult. And in MTU, you get these subjects directly in labs, um, working with the computers in college as well. Um, so there's no kind of pressure, uh, I suppose, um, kind of worrying on your own systems and stuff. And you do get as much support as possible from the incredible lectures here in MTU. Okay, so again, it's a large enough class in that there are uh, in and around anywhere between 100 and 120 um, in, in each year, and it's a combination of lectures and labs, and you mentioned the labs there as being you know, um, a, a core part of the learning. So in terms of the labs, is that where you would do the programming part of the program? And could you maybe give us an indication as to the types of, I suppose, the types of programs that you would look at as part of that labs, lab, lab work? Yeah, so when I started, there was 110 people um, in my year. Um, and you do go in with this, I suppose, knowledge from your teachers in school that you're going in to compete against everyone in your year. And I do think you should start getting into the mindset that you're going in to work with everyone in your year uh, and achieve the same goal, because that way you'll find it much easier to make friends. Um, and like I discussed before, you are going into separate labs, which makes it much easier as well to work with people, get to know them more, get to know lecturers. Um, and as mentioned um, by Claire, with programming, you, you, or even all subjects in BIS, you have to have no knowledge really of anything previously because they do give a great insight to every, I suppose, business aspect, as well as the computer aspects as well. Um, and I mean, programming is just like any other languages. Um, they say when you learn one, all the others are just as easier to learn then. 
and it's very similar to programming languages as well, such as JavaScript, C++, C Sharp. Um, we initially started, I suppose, with Visual Basic, which would be just the fundamentals of programming. But I suppose once you get that insight first, um, it makes all the other languages much easier because they are very similar. They do have their differences and they do have their, I suppose, difficulties as well. But um, MTU uh, BIS offers, I mean, a great fundamentals and, and getting to know the language first. And tell me, have you found any part of the course challenging? Um, yeah, so like all things, you're learning new um, new things, things you've never come across before, so it's going to be challenging. And on top of that, then you have six different modules in a semester, and you have a, a wide range of continuous assessment. Um, so I suppose time management is key, and it's very important, I suppose, to reach out for help when you need it. I mean, the lecturers are there for help. Your student, your I mean, classmates are also there to help. Um, even though you might think that, you know, you're maybe better than a different classmate. They'll definitely offer something that you definitely don't know already. And I mean, time management, being able to take notes, it's important to get yourself a notepad and write out um, at the start of the year what you need to do and when things are due because they do pile on fairly fast. Um, so yeah, I, I do think time management can be challenging, but it, it's nothing at all that can be overcome. Okay, it sounds, Adam, like in addition to kind of the business modules and the IT modules, that there are a lot of other skills that you gain during your, your four years of the degree. So obviously time management, team skills, team, you know, working with your classmates, interpersonal skills. I presume you would have done a lot of presentation work as part of the course as well. Um, so just, I suppose, because we just have one minute left, can you tell me a little bit about your work placement? Yeah, so this time last year I would have been applying for different roles um, that was being supplied by the college. And I was very fortunate I got my role in Biomare and Pharmaceuticals. Um, so I joined them as an IM applications intern as part of their international IM team. And I, I worked on different projects across both here and the US in IT infrastructure, data analytics, Joe, all different subjects. I do think. Um, what was very influential for me was studying BIS, however, because um, when you're going into a, such a large multinational company, there is different departments that might be as techy, they might lack a bit of IT literacy, uh, and it's very important to be able to, I suppose, communicate um, information uh, in a kind of knowledgeable way to different business departments, such as marketing, such as accounting, where you are, I suppose, analysing the data and you are... Um, I suppose, and making sense of it for them, and you kind of got to be able to communicate it. And I do think what I gained most wasn't just the technical skills from uh, Biomarin, it was just also the personal skills. You do get to know yourself more as a person. Um, I suppose I was very unfortunate that I had to do my placement, I'm 99% remotely, uh, but it did have its advantages as well. I did kind of have to rely on myself more to get work done, um, not mess around, so I, I suppose it did help me grow as a character as well. Okay, thank you, Adam. And I suppose just to point out as well that given the type of course that this is, that we would have students on graduation who would go obviously more into the technical side of IS, but equally we'd have people who would take more general business roles, would take project management type roles, um, would, would go into more kind of business analysis. So doing a, B a BBIS degree will allow you to, I suppose, get an exposure to both sides of the coin, basically, and I suppose decide then at a later stage which, 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 which you'd like to pursue afterwards. Okay, so I suppose in terms of the Bachelor of Business and Information Systems degree and summing up, um, we can say that if you're interested in technology as well as business subjects, then we would be more than confident that this would be the right programme for you. Thank you very much, Claire and Gillian and Adam. Some really practical and in insightful information and advice there. Um, you've, the questions I had here, you've covered the, the majority of them through, through your questions and answers. Just quickly, you mentioned that uh, Gillian has three and a half years in terms of professional qualifications uh, after her degree. Is that what students should expect? Uh, that would be typical. That would be typical for um, obviously in terms of doing a professional accountancy, uh, accounting qualification. There are a number of professional bodies there. 
So obviously um, the main bodies there would be Chartered, ACCA, um, CPA, and as well as that we'd have CMAS, so Certified um, uh, Management Accountants. So we get the accounting degree program will give you exemptions from each of the bodies. Anyone who wants to know the specific exemptions, they can come and talk to us at the information stand afterwards. And just to point out as well that typically it's in addition to doing professional exams, it's three and a half years um, training or kind of apprenticeship I suppose effectively you could call it as well um, and if you wanted to shorten that time frame you'd, you'd need to do a further postgraduate so typically three and a half years. So th thank you very much uh, I'll ask Julian and Adam maybe to stay here and Claire thank you very much and thanks to Claire, uh, Theo, Don and Caroline for, for your contributions and, and for, for your insights uh, this evening and I might invite the other students to come up and we just have a couple of questions to pose to the students, but while, while the students are, are coming up, I just want to mention, is this mic on? Okay, I'll use this mic. Uh, we have uh, three other programs I just want to mention tonight uh, as part of the, the portfolio of business programs, and they are in global business and pilot studies, agriculture and horticulture. Uh, within, within the school. So just a, a brief mention of, of all three of those and then we'll, we'll fi finish off with questions for, from our student and alumni representatives. The MT946 Bachelor of Science Honours in Global Business and Pilot Studies. This is a new ab initio programme that provides embedded pilot training as part of a level A degree. Students on this programme study on campus here in uh, MTU for, one, for year one, undertake pilot training with AFTA, the Atlantic Flight Training Academy, uh, for a further two years and then complete the final year of study online while working. For prospective pilots, the ability to complete flight training together with an honours degree provides a student with a unique opportunity uh, to take a blended approach to becoming a professional pilot. Applicants must successfully complete an assessment by our approved training organisation partner, AFTA. This may involve a simulator assessment, an interview and a medical assessment. There is a substantial non-standard cost associated with completing this programme as the aviation aspect of the programme is not covered by government supports and this must be considered by all applicants. The MT750 Bachelor of Science Agriculture. This course develops farming, business and management skills to enable graduates to follow careers as successful farmers or work in the agribusiness sector. The content covered is one-third business modules and two-thirds agriculture or science-related modules. Graduates can progress to complete the one-year add-on BSc Honours in Agriculture or pursue employment opportunities within agricultural-related business, for example, sales representative, quality control and production manager. Our agri students attend both MTU Bis Bishopstown campus and Chagas Clonakilty Agricultural College throughout the course. And finally, the Bachelor of Business, or the Bachelor of Science, sorry, Bachelor of Science in Horticulture is available for year two advanced entry through the Cork College's progression scheme for students who successfully complete the QQI courses in our linked further education colleges. The programme educates students in science, business and technology aspects of horticulture and covers areas such as sustainable landscape development, greenhouse, crop growing of fruit and veg, tree and shrubbery nursery and floriculture. The programme also offers the students an opportunity to continue their studies to level eight, preparing them for more advanced entry to business with a higher skill portfolio. Each of these th programmes that I mentioned here will be covered in separate information events, but please visit the stands at the end of this session uh, where our colleagues will be able to help you with specific questions on these and other programmes. Okay, so I'm just going to turn back to our students who've now joined, joined me on stage uh, for a final, final few questions. And just have two questions and I'm going to ask a few of you the same questions and, and uh, just to get different perspectives. The first question is, what have you valued most to date during your time at MTU um, and wh what supports your, your business degree uh, study? So what have you valued most as part of your MTU education? And I might start with, with uh, uh, Nikki. Yeah. Um, for me, for me, I think the biggest value that I got from MTU was the um, I think just the overall understanding of marketing and how broad um, it can all be as mentioned be here that just because you um, have um, expertise or you want to learn about one area you can learn about it in every area and for me developing myself and learning about the different aspects and getting to try them all out and not having to set my size on one department or one thing has really helped me and that's probably been 
the base of my knowledge here that it's this is what I want to do and I kind of knew this from a young age and I'm glad I got to experience everything I did and I'm glad I went to uh, mainstream marketing and um, for me it's just been getting the knowledge of my, who I am and developing myself personally professionally and learning more about consumers minds and the businesses and everything that entails uh, in the topic of marketing. Okay thank you Nikki and Gillian I'll ask you the same question what have you valued most during your time at MTU? Um, I suppose to follow up on that is probably the support system that we're offering here. Um, you know, a lecture isn't ever too far away, even if they're in person or just, especially over the last 18 plus months, um, that there were always an email or even a Zoom call away, um, which helped, you know, numerous students throughout the, you know, challenging to adapt from face-to-face um, -face lectures to online lectures. Um, and the support just not only to be there, but for the academic support, ex support as well, that, um, you know, if you were struggling in any, um, any aspect of it, that they'd, ha they'd hold extra tutorials or um, lab classes or anything for you just to, you know, help you get over the line, because they are there to help you. They're not to be there to be a scary kind of lecturer. Um, they are just kind of like, um, it's more for, like for informal. They are kind of like a friend to you uh, rather than a, a lecturer. Thank you, Julian. And Neve, I'll ask the same question. Um, one thing that's always stuck with me during my time here is that you're more than just a number, really. You're a valued student, and lecturers and your fellow students will support you to no end. They're all so encouraging and supportive and, and guide you, really, in your course and all your studies. And this has really benefited me and because it just goes to show your work and the assignments you submit and your attendance doesn't go unnoticed by the lecturer and it just helps you in your degree at the end of the day really and just to add on to what everyone else has said yeah thank you Neve. okay so Rasha if you were to to think back to your 17 18 year old self uh, and you were looking at your CEO form and you're looking at your, your selection of, of leaving certain subjects as, as a lot of our audience will be tonight what advice would you like to have gotten at that point? So if you were to advise your, your 17, 18 year old self, what would advice would you give? I think for me, I'm really glad that I went for a course that's so broad and has so many different types of opportunities for it. I think at the time I was too indecisive to pinpoint just one exact area. So I think I just say to stick to my guns and go for something more broad that has more career opportunities and you know, will benefit me in the future. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, and the same question to, to you, Adam. Um, I think the best advice I can give is to be open-minded because I suppose what you've learned from all these courses tonight, uh, they're all very broad and they can bring you into completely different areas of both business and I suppose life as well. Um, so you'd want to be open-minded, just take every day at a time. Um, you, I suppose, can not like something and then you might learn to love it and then workplace. It's just, no, don't be so hard on yourself. You're going to make mistakes. So just... Um, take every day at a time and just keep open-minded. Okay, thank you very much. And Deborah, the last word to you. <laughs> um, I suppose if I could talk to myself back then would be to relax and stay calm and what's meant for you won't pass you. Um, what I didn't mention earlier on is that I actually repeated my leave insert. I did my leave insert first in 2009 and I picked a course on my CEO um, that I just thought sounded lovely. I didn't look at the modules, I didn't know what careers I had afterwards, but it just sounded that it was really gas, really. And that's actually what I got offered in my CEO was the course that I barely could pronounce, but it got it. And I completed a year of that and realized, oh my God, what am I after doing? And I went back to repeat my lead insert. And what that did for me was that it gave me a year's experience to grow up a bit and look, it gave me the opportunity to really understand how to apply for college and what to do. And don't just go by a course that sounds lovely. Really look at the modules that you will be studying. Um, and you'd be surprised they are very inter interesting. Um, I learned that I was going to be studying social media and event management and communications. That all sounded like something that I would really love to do afterwards. So everything will work out. So don't be panicked. The leave and start will end. And you all have a life afterwards. And it's fabulous. <laughs> okay, thank you.
Okay, so thank you very much. And that way, my friend, is a selection of our fabulous uh, graduates and, and students that we're extremely proud of. So thank you very much for your insight and contribution tonight. <laughs>